A mother is not a woman. The first time I heard that, I look at my professor, Levi Strauss, and I say, what the heck is he trying to tell me here? But a mother is not a woman. A mother is a space between a woman and a child. No mother, no child. No child, no mother. Istanbul is not a city. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Istanbul is a space between a place, which is, we know, between east and west, and a people, a tribe, a group of people. Be careful about the future. I know a lot of very old future. Some futures don't age very well. We need new future. I love the word courage. Courage. Oh my God, we need courage. Uh, we are so focused on everything that is technology that we think that this is the future. Forget it. Technology is not the future. By the way, by the time you learn to use something, it's already obsolete. You know that. Huh? By the time you learn how to use your cell phone, you need another one. So it doesn't last. People last. And what really makes a difference is the culture. The culture is the value, the system of value, your behavior, what you do, and what are your priorities you have in life. The mission for me, for Istanbul, in the new future they're going to have to invent, is to create a culture that will be ahead of time, and that other people around the world are going to come to visit Istanbul, not just to visit as tourists and to take selfies, right? But to learn about what Istanbul has to share with them, how we bridge the gap, the space in between. So I want to give you some example about how we can create culture. First of all, when I was uh, 18 at the university, uh, I wrote uh, a memoir on somebody that you're familiar with. Uh, his name is Mustafa Kemal Atatürk. I was very interested by this gentleman because he was trying to change a culture, to create a new culture. Wow. And in one of my book, uh, the title is Move Up, you can find there's whole chapter about Mustafa Kemal Atatürk. And then the... And I can tell you, he had courage. <laughs> Absolutely incredible courage. But today, we need even more courage than that. I want to give you another example of one of my heroes. His name is Lee Kuan Yew. Lee Kuan Yew was the creator of uh, Singapore. Ah, interesting. I would like to suggest that here in Istanbul, we go around the world to look at different models of city and city-states that have been successful. There are things that we don't, we don't need to reinvent, we just need to take them from them. So, let's go to, to, to uh, Singapore. 1965, Singapore was rejected from the Malaysian Confederation. They were, the Malay were afraid, too many Chinese in Singapore, so let's get rid of them. So, Get out, 1965. Now, here you are, you have no land, no oil, no gas, no money, no agriculture. What's going to happen? Today, Singapore is one of the richest and most fantastic uh, uh, place and culture in the world. How did they manage to go there? One word, the reptilian. What I call the reptilian is the old part of the brain. Tomorrow I'm going to explain how branding should always go to the reptilian brand, not the cortex one. So, reptilian. So Lee Kuan Yew, in order to create the very powerful culture at Singapore, used one single word. One word, one word. And with that, he created what you have today. Now, be ready for that. <laughs> The word is clean. The first thing you have to do is to be clean. 
We don't have anything. We don't have any money. We don't have any power. But clean, 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 clean. You see, children, for example, the first imprint of children is to make sure that they are clean. Clean, so your, the street should be clean, your clothes should be clean, your face should be clean. Clean, all right? Then the next step is discipline. Oh, yeah, because we're telling you no chewing gum. You know, we put the chewing gum under the table. It's terrible. So. Chewing gum is forbidden in Singapore. I know you say, oh my God. I mean, this is better to be successful like Singapore and not to have to use chewing gum, right? Anyway, so clean, then discipline. Okay, uh, what, what next? After that, what they have is uh, education. Ah, because you want to know how to do the best to be clean, to be, so you learn. Today, Singapore is the best university on the planet. All of them are over there. They are the campus for all the university. That's what we need to do here. The same thing here. Okay. Then clean means education and means uh, 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 health. Uh, they have the best hospital. They have the best. Uh, okay. So then we keep moving this way. Today there is less than uh, than two percent unemployment in Singapore. Ooh, we could learn from that, right? <laughs> What about as a goal, no more than 2% unemployment in Istanbul? How do we do that? Clean? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but we have to start with clean. We have to go this way in this direction. We can create a culture. I think the future of Istanbul is not just in creating new buildings. Uh, you know, the courage is to have the courage to say, we need to create the next culture. We need to create the culture that the world is going to want to copy. And what is this culture? How do we create a culture? Uh, one of my uh, experience in the past was to work with uh, Horst Chutzi, the president of the Rieskalton. And at the Rieskalton, we say, we're going to create a culture. All right? So this is not just a hotel. Huh? This is not just employees. And we start with ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen. Whoa. Let's suppose that the people that come to visit Singapore feel the same way. Let's suppose the people that come to visit Istanbul are treated like ladies and gentlemen, being served by ladies and gentlemen. Wow. And one thing that we say, for example, at the Rieskalten, um, you cannot say yes. What? Yeah, you cannot say yes. Oh, really? Yeah. You have to say, certainly my pleasure. Oh, I try that with my wife, by the way. Uh, you know, I'm still waiting for, certainly my pleasure. Oh, thank you, dear. <laughs> so, then you, you cannot say no. Oh, think about people visiting Istanbul and they want something. You never say no. What do you say? You say, just give me a minute, let me see what I can do about it. I was at the Rizcalton in, in Santiago de Chile, and I asked for the uh, uh, Wall Street Journal, and they didn't have it. So the person said, just give me a minute, let me see what I can do. Then he went to the computer room, he got the printer, he came back and said, okay, today I have only a print out, but tomorrow I will have it. Wow. So when you create a culture like this, everybody is concerned. You see, her should see what for me a great example. Um, when we were walking into a hotel, he would see a paper on the floor. He was the president, the chairman, the big guy. He will go and take the paper and put it in the basket. Think about everybody in Istanbul doing that in the street, taking care of everything, being responsible for their own city, for their own environment, teaching children to do that. This is already something that is, you know, incredible when you, when you accomplish uh, something like, like that. So this notion of culture is something that we have to understand. This is the value. You know, uh, people, this is very important, but what are the value of these people? What are the, the principles? What are the, the things that they put as number one in their life, the thing that they want to accomplish? So one thing that is very powerful is Istanbul is not just a city, as I told you before. It's a space in between many, many different directions. Right? So, of course, the cliche is to say the east, the west, the bridge, uh, 
you know, from, from my window uh, in, in my room, I, I can see uh, Asia over there. It is, uh, I remember the first time I, 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 I went to uh, Istanbul, I was driving my little uh, De Chevaux, you know, the Citroën ugly car, the ugly car, yeah. and I was driving and I was going to India. India. And I arrived uh, at the end of Europe and I saw the bridge. And I say, oh my God, I'm going to drive and I'm going to be in Asia. Oh, wow, this is amazing. So, yeah, huh? so we have to understand that for you, it, it, it's so common, you not even think about it anymore. But for the rest of the world, this is incredible to be able to be the connector between two completely different civilizations. You know, we, we have to understand better than just the branding of the city. We have to understand the higher purpose. What is the higher purpose of the city like uh, uh, Istanbul? Uh, is to be the model for the future. Globalization is dead. And I will speak tomorrow about that, and I hope uh, you, you, you will come. Um, globalization is dead. What we have now is global cities that are connected between them, and a tribe that I call the satellite tribe, people that kept moving from one city to another, to another, to another. And the rest of the planet is what we call flyover. I mean, not even pay attention to that. Is it good or bad? I don't know, but this is the reality, right? Now, look at these different global cities. Some global cities are going to be ahead and becoming like Singapore, being models, you know? And what do you need for that? You need an airport, you need an airline. Well, we have that here, right? Uh, you need telecommunication, you need a, a safe place. You need good food. Wow. You know, I, I, I was asked by Georgetown University to study higher education, how to attract people from all over the world to come to a university to study. Let's suppose you want to do that. You want to attract all the best minds around the world to come to study in uh, Istanbul. What do you have to offer? So the intellectual, they will say, oh, we need to have a good professor, good science, good research, good lot of publication. Okay. We did this, this work among other places in India. And when we ask Indian, uh, where do they want to go to get an MBA, a PhD? So, London. Oh. You mean London University? No, London. Oh. Why do you want to go to London? Because they have the best Indian food. <laughs> so you see, this is a reptilian, the reptilian dimension. The reptilian always wins. Huh? Uh, and we, we need to hear about the food in Istanbul. This is very, very important. The food is so crucial. Of course, why? Because we go there every day. You know, we need this dimension there. So there is, there is a higher purpose here. The global cities are going to be interconnected. And the global tribe uh, is what the people we want to attract. Tourism is over. Forget about tourism. You try to go to Venice. This is awful. This is terrible. Venice is being destroyed, polluted by what I call terrorists. Tourists, terrorists, terror, they are terrorists. And so we, we don't want that. People aren't going to come here to take pictures. They're going to come here to learn the new culture that is going to dominate the future of this planet. And that's what is key here. The leader of, uh, and I think Mr. Mayor is a fantastic leader and, and uh, very, uh, uh, happy to be able to meet him. I think a leader is somebody that is going to connect everything we do in this city with the higher purpose. You remember uh, uh, Mr. Kennedy, uh, John Fitzgerald Kennedy say, let's put a man on the moon before the end of the decade and bring him back. That is a mission statement, right? So let's have a mission statement like that with a higher purpose, connecting people, different cultures, making a place where cultures can meet and respect each other in a free way. I can tell you, you need a lot of courage to, to create that. Huh? But when we have a mission like that, when we have a, such a powerful mission statement, the woman at the Kennedy Space Center, the cleaning lady that was cleaning the floor, when you ask her, what do you do? She say, I'm putting a man on the moon before the end of the decade. Wow. 
I would like everybody in Istanbul to be able to say, okay, I'm not just cleaning the floor, I'm not just selling, you know, I'm doing that for the world. I'm creating an environment where culture can meet the space in between cultures, when we can create the global mind that is needed for the future. Uh, and so this is, this is not globalization. We're not going to become all the same, buying the same thing. And this is, there is a strong reaction against that. Forget it. The global uh, cities are going to be providing an identity. This notion of identity is absolutely crucial. I don't know if you look at the news today, but in Bremberg, in Italy, uh, the extreme right won the election. Wow. One thing that I've been trying to say for a long time is we need culture therapy. Culture therapy. Yeah. Some cultures are neurotic, some cultures are psychotic, some culture, but we need to cure them, we need to help them to get better, to be more creative and open-minded. Right? And there is a danger to see the old demon coming back. The Germans are very concerned about that. They know that. When there is a demonstration but neo-Nazi, there is immediately half a million people in the street trying to say no, 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 no. They know the danger, right? But the danger is still there. If you look at the French, the French don't know the danger. They're always on strike. Why? Because part of the culture is, I don't want to work. That the French archetype. You know? So they don't work. By the way, they're never on strike in, the August, in August, never. Why not? Because they're on vacation. <laughs> so you see, so they, 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 need, they need, need a therapy. The French need a therapy. Huh? Uh, they, there is twice more unemployment in France than in Switzerland. Why? Because the Swiss, they work. Right? So we have to understand here, what we mean by courage is the courage to be demanding. Something I learned, and I spent a big part of my life working with autistic children, uh, when you want to take care of children, you need to show that you care. But in order to show that you care, you have to be demanding. You cannot be caring if you're not demanding. Demanding is that if you give them everything they want, then they don't care about that, and then they get spoiled. And, you know. But demanding, be responsible see the consequences of your act. You know? So that's what we need to do. That's why the old notion of Lee Kuan Yew starting with clean, well, it, it's magical. Start with clean. You know? And so, very interesting to see if, I, if you study the, the, the world, and I do that all the time, cultures, countries that are clean are successful. <laughs> the ones that are not clean are not successful. <sighs> so what do you need to do? to help the, the dirty, the country, to become clean. Have you ever been into a Japanese bathroom? Wow. It's like being in a spaceship. A spaceship, and the technology there is with all these buttons for this and this button for that, and you approach and this get opened, and you're doing, oh my god, you, you, you don't know. You can spend an hour there just learning what is going on here. This is, the Japanese are very, very clean and very successful. And so this is something that we have to understand, that we need to be the courage to be caring and demanding at the same time, and to create a culture that the rest of the world is going to want to copy. I mean, there are many things to do in Istanbul. Huh? I uh, don't speak uh, Turkish, of course, but I don't see anything in English anywhere. In Singapore, last time I was there, my driver, spoke English to me, and he said, Sir, how is my English? Oh, I said, it's quite good, you know, uh, better than mine. <laughs> so uh, he said, well, because, you know, they say you have to speak good English. We have to all speak good English. Wow, demanding, because they're caring. And they're all going to speak very good English. It's amazing, being demanding, right? So we have to become a global uh, uh, city, attracting the, what I call the satellite tribe, people that keep their, their time going around the world. These people are very rich, they have a lot of money, they have a lot of knowledge, they, they, you want them to be here. Let me just give you briefly uh, uh, the description of one of the members of this satellite tribe. They have what we call 3K children, 
three K, that's the letter K. Which means these kids, they have been, uh, they spend uh, uh, five years in France and then uh, seven years in China and then uh, five years in New York. And they have three cultures. They speak three cultures, not three languages. Speak culture, three cultures. They have three houses. Uh, they have three cars. Uh, they, uh, they have three, I mean, this is all the notion of three. If you have only one language, one house, and one kid, you, you out. You have to start being demanding. <laughs> have the courage to learn another language, the courage to go and learn other cultures. Uh, I'm, I'm not telling you one culture is better than another. I believe that we need to respect each other. I need, we need to respect culture, but cultures can uh, uh, create a synergy, can enrich each other. And that's what we can do. This Istanbul can be the laboratory of the future generation of people that are going to connect the different cultures of the world to get them to respect each other, to create each other the future. Uh, we need a new future. And I believe that the new future can be created in Istanbul. And I just want to finish with one quote from uh, a crazy guy called Napoleon. <laughs> Napoleon say, if the planet Earth was only one state, the capital should be Constantinople. So I think this is the future that we're going to be all this global city interconnected. And I really believe that if we work hard together, if we have the courage, and if we're demanding, we can make Istanbul the capital of the next world. Thank you.